Hey there, you're welcome to this week's Tech Tuesdays webinar that speaks about measuring the success of your data governance program. Today we have David Gaffney, Senior Data Governance Principal, and Donovan Tokiyama, Associate Consultant from the Informatica Professional Services team, to drive the session. Before we start this webinar, let's go through some housekeeping tips. The duration of the webinar is one hour. That includes 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in the Q&A box. Dial-in participants are muted for the entire session, and the session is being recorded and will be available in the Informatica Support YouTube channel and the Success Portal. You will also be able to download the slide deck from the Success Portal site. Please feel free to put in your feedbacks and suggestions for the session in the post-webinar survey. The Tech Tuesdays webinars are hosted within the Success Portal, which is a microlearning platform that offers free and unlimited learning to all registered users. This feature-rich platform was launched to help you learn and use Informatica products better. We have launched a data governance learning path in the Success Portal, but that will enable you to implement data-centric approach to compliance based on your role. Here are a few important links that you can go over later that will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, David and Donovan. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for joining Tech Tuesday. I'm David Gaffney, Senior Principal with IPS in Informatica. So here's a, a bit of what we're gonna go through today. We're gonna talk about building your own definition of success, what that means for your governance program, what that means for your business. We break that into business and governance metrics. So business metric might be something like new account onboarding or time to respond to an audit, things like that, that you're looking to use the governance program to support. And then you have overall care and feeding of the governance program, like adoption levels and number of stewards that you brought on board, number of systems scanned and those sorts of things. So we have a good set of those categories that will break down and it's really a tool to help you brainstorm about which metrics make the most sense for you short-term and long-term. Then we'll talk about Informatica products and how they support active monitoring. So the ability to track growth of the governance program, ability to track compliance and adoption, and how we've got a lot of great features out of the box from an analytics perspective. We'll get into some APIs as well and how we can read into Axon specifically to be able to pull out additional metrics uh, to build custom reports and so on, and how that, those can help you monitor the program as well. We'll do short demos of both of those. So seeing how the products uh, take it into account and how we can customize the APIs. And then finally, we'll close out with the, the feedback loop. So really having all these great metrics helps you manage your program, but we wanna make sure that we feed back into the program itself so that you're improving it as you go. So we'll get into that in some more detail. So when you look at defining your metrics for your own company, you want to choose things that really have a benefit from a business perspective. And so you want to look at your own success metrics, tying them to your business goals. So if you think about an example from a banking perspective, you want to have improved customer acquisition. You want new customers to be able to easily sign up with you, create a new account, create a new relationship so that you can start to extend business with them. You want to look at protecting sensitive data. So certainly you're getting a lot of personal identifiable information, personal credit information. This is all key information you need to protect um, in order to manage your customers better and also make sure they don't leave uh, if there's a breach. You may also have things like regulatory response. So you want to be able to show your auditors, you know, the FDIC auditor, that you have solid business practices, you have strong solvency in the organization so that you can better support your customers and be a viable business. These things are all driven by data, such as new customers by month, the abandonment rate, you know, if somebody is halfway into the process of signing up for an account and they get hung up on an issue with data and they, they back out and no longer complete the account, um, that's something you wanna know about. Maybe from a sensitive data perspective, looking at um, identifying information. So their social, their passport number, um, from a, you know, another perspective, looking at formulas and recipes, let's say in a consumer package, good perspective where you have key information you need to protect and lock down. As a healthcare provider, you might need things like tracking medical and counter data, customer or patient records and wanting to be able to protect those appropriately. 
auditors then are looking at ability to see financial controls, Sarbanes-Oxley, Graham Leach Bliley, things like this that you want to make sure you're able to track and link to specific data that drives those. So financial control, relevant information, level, um, amounts of receivables, transaction limits, and so on. These are all things that you would want to manage much more closely so that you can be compliant. A strong governance program supports these and will have metrics on their own to be able to drive information about these and make sure that you're performing in the appropriate manner. So thinking, take these to a pure governance perspective, the quality control may be looking at does a social security number fit the appropriate pattern? Is it present when it should be? How about consistency? Looking at new customers by month. Now this is probably have a pretty predictable range for this where that should be a positive number and probably shouldn't be 10,000 unless you're an enormous bank. If you're a small regional bank, maybe this number is 100. So you might, might wanna look at how to put a control on this to validate that we're not getting stray inaccurate data coming in. Traceability, you may wanna look at a, a number like receivables to say this is something that lands on a dashboard. You wanna make sure that number makes sense. And if it doesn't, can I trace it back to where it came from? So these are all things that a good governance program starts to give you that supports these key metrics. I have these in place. Now I can see shorter time to respond to audits, reduce security exposure, and also building up you know, your, your connected network of data stewards, so your Rolodex of experts. So being able to have information that you capture about this so we can look at you know, who is the data expert for my teller management system, who's the, the one responsible for records and being able to trace that information in my accounts. So let's bring it all together and look at our method for being able to brainstorm and really understand key data metrics across the organization that will help you govern your data better. To help our customers establish their own success metrics, we build out this foundation. So five key areas that we look at for measuring the success of any governance program. These are intended to be a basis for building that positive business impact going forward. We have five different areas we're gonna look at. So we have adoption and participation. So this is really how much your program is being adopted across the organization. So the number of people involved, how, per, how active they are in creating models, and contributing to the models and really understanding and building it out because this is gonna be critical to supporting it long-term. We have coverage and alignment, which is really looking across the overall business structure. And we wanna make sure we've got the right key business areas identified with people involved, again, from an adoption perspective. So this may be looking at the, the core business areas like uh, banking and account management, but also regulatory records management, key different areas of the business that are gonna contribute to the overall support of the program. The more broad, the better. And we have control and quality. So being able to look at uh, data quality in the organization, capturing lineage from end to end, um, supportive workflows for maintaining the models and so on. These are gonna be key to supporting things long-term. These really drive those business components we were talking about before. So measurability, KPIs, do we have a, the appropriate impact on the business from profitability effect, effectiveness perspective? So are we managing that, um, you know, metrics for new accounts? Are we managing where the personal data lives? These will be key components that we want to manage going forward. Then we have risk and regulatory insights. So are we managing the right information? So looking at things related to, um, you know, FDIC requirements, FINRA requirements, maybe looking at HIPAA and so on, depending on the, the business you're in, they'll have different regulatory components we'll wanna look at to support this. So we go into each one of these at a lower level. And so the idea is to really look at some of these ideas as a checklist, as a way to get a good sense of what you wanna manage going forward. So adoption, getting to the next level, what does this mean? Stuff we can get out of the applications out of Informatica are things like number of stewards involved, um, are they assigned to appropriate areas of data, what about things that aren't assigned, so do we have key or critical data elements that don't have an owner to them, that may be something we want to address. Also value-added activities, so how much are we adding to the, to the model, are they efficient in the way they work, 
and are we growing the glossary against a, a pace that we're looking at? So maybe we've looked at, we want to have 100 glossary items in the, during in the pilot, you know, so maybe in the first month, but then six months from now, we really want to have 1,500 glossary items. So we want to be able to track this kind of information going forward. There always are going to be metrics that are outside of our product set. So things like um, that you would measure through a sentiment survey, survey. So putting out a survey monkey to say, who's aware of our new governance program and are you participating? Looking at things like how many people have watched the introductory videos on a learning management system. These are things we can't necessarily track directly in the Informatica product set, but are going to contribute to the overall metrics. And so, again, we would look at these and try to figure out which of these makes sense early on to really start to monitor the program so that we can get a good sense of how well it's going. The second area is coverage and alignment. So again, key business areas that are participating and are, do they have appropriate activities? So. We look at horizontal alignment, and by this I mean source to target. So being able to look at um, a source data system feeding into a data warehouse, feeding into MDM, and then finally onto a, a dashboard for um, for business intelligence. So do we can we trace that whole life cycle of application data? Because that would be really useful to know for tracking down like data quality issue. Um, looking at how many lines of business are involved. So Again, we were looking before at you know, just banking, and so maybe the retail banking side, but then we want to make sure commercial banking has a voice in the governance model and mortgage and investments all are contributing information so you get a much broader support across the, the company. We may also look at overall data that is mapped for a particular area. So if we know we've got 500 key data elements, you know, if we can get to <clears throat> 250 and then 300 and 400, then we can, we can track how, how wide and broad the program is becoming. And we wanna be able to make sure we've got not just the governance team, but business stewards, technical stewards playing a role. Outside of the applications, again, looking at awareness interviews, maybe looking at um, in your enterprise architecture, <clears throat> which strategic applications are onboarded versus non-strategic. So we wanna make sure we've got the key systems involved in the model itself. So they're capturing those appropriately. Now, again, this count of you know, 89 systems and we've got 54 cataloged, this may not come from Axon EDC initially, but it's something that you'll wanna track outside and put on your own dashboard. From a control and quality perspective, you might wanna look at you know, typical data quality elements like you know, looking at uh, data quality scores, measuring data quality dimensions across um, different aspects. So looking at, you know, completeness for required fields or things that should fit into a particular domain or maybe match a pattern like an account number having two alpha, 10 numeric, that sort of thing. We'll also want to look at from a quality perspective, um, SLAs against workflows. So if we are running a workflow to do quality improvement, are we able to fix an errant glossary issue in, you know, in five days as opposed to three weeks. Um, are we able to establish lineage? A lot of times when we look at quality, it's also tracing information end to end. And we'll have things like confidence levels and so on. And so the tools themselves are really good at capturing that kind of information, you know, scoring against particular data sources to say, I believe this is a five-star data source. You should definitely be using this versus one that might be suspect. Other things you can look at outside of the products themselves may be issues or accuracies that you see um, in the system itself. You know, so maybe you've got um, poorly keyed entries that came in on a data entry system that somehow end up uh, long-term in, in the application. So you may not be able to detect those at time of capture because we aren't really monitoring that front end, but then later on we can see how those are captured maybe looking at disconnects among business units and partners, you know, having the same definition of a product or something like that, that we'll wanna look at outside. And then other components you might measure like unit cost of data, storage data from an ILM perspective. Typically these are captured in, in different methods um, outside of the product set, but are still gonna be critical to feeding the overall governance program. 
So then these are driving some of our business measures. So measurability and KPIs. So we definitely want to be able to look at <clears throat> core KPI data elements and where they're, how they're managed. Are they managed well? Do they have high quality in the governance program? So that when we're looking at them on a dashboard, it's strong capabilities. Um, we have high confidence in the data. You may look at things like <clears throat> workflows executed. So again, you know, we have the capability to look at uh, managing change requests and being able to improve system definitions, glossary definitions. So how often are those run through completely without having to do a lot of rework? That may be a good measure of KPIs for our governance program. And again, you might want to look at, you know, improving from manual to automated processes. So having things like <clears throat> the ability to see, uh, you know, direct impact of a new system onboarding that has improved our ability to get insight into information. Other things outside of the applications may be things like revenue growth, right? So now that I've got better customer onboarding, hopefully I can see that, you know, I've got a 1% uptick um, in the last month in new accounts being established, which is again from helped by error reduction, helped by better governance overall. You may also wanna look at your integration with external partners so from a banking and industry perspective, you may be sharing account transaction data coming from outside sources or maybe passing it on to e-presentment. The way you integrate data with third parties can be very difficult. And this may be something again, supported by governance, but that you would measure in different ways outside of the products. And then finally, we have risk and regulatory. So this is looking at applicability against uh, particular policies. So uh, personal information, credit information, health information, these all need to be tied to different policies. And we're able to see that we've got coverage across these critical glossary entries in the products themselves. So we can look at, you know, a mapping from your PHI, PHI policy against your, your health records system, against you know, encounters, um, and so on, and be able to treat that appropriately. And we'll know where to look when it's time to run an audit. We'll also want to look at things like um, SEC, OSHA, you know, again, this is very industry specific, but for your specific business, if you have particular um, policies you need to manage against financial data, against account opening information, SOX controls, and so on, these are things you want to be able to track and, and can track very well in the product themselves. And we'll want to understand the accuracy of security classifications and so on. These are all key elements, again, that we'll want to kind of checkbox and see what are the most critical ones that we want to manage right up front as part of establishing the governance program. Now there's going to be a lot of external stuff here. So you think about like CCPA compliance, GDPR compliance, you know, not having um, fines because you have slow response to these, um, you know, looking at the way you do an e-discovery and being able to respond quickly to um, you know, to the opposing party to be able to respond with information. This is something that, that absolutely is helped by better governance and structure in your data. And so that would be something we could measure maybe a, a faster audit response or e-discovery response time before and after the program got, um, got implemented. So as you do this, now that's a long list. And so our thought is that you go through that list and kind of, you know, checkbox key elements that we think are going to be best for managing the program early on. And then what we want to look at, typically we do a pilot component first. We're looking at a small subset of your critical business data so that we can get the foothold with the product and make sure we start to establish the right capabilities. So we can look at is what we call a minimum standards report just to get started. And so this may be a recommendation specifically for the pilot would be let's look at three different areas. So stewardship, so let's look at numbers, look at, look at accounts of people, how much data is managed, what's the coverage across the enterprise. Adoption is what are stewards contributing to? Is there strong workflow activity? What about usage patterns? Are people able to find what they need when they're looking for information? And then business KPIs, so key systems that are governed, um, what kind of insight do you have into the overall data lineage, whether that's system to data set to attribute or horizontally across the organization from one system to another leading to a business dashboard. So these are some key components we'll wanna look at 
to establish that minimum set and then later you know maybe scroll back up and start looking at additional key elements to look at from a um, metrics perspective to start building out your program long term. So now we're going to talk about how Informatica enables this measurement within the product set as well as other means. So we have a lot of different capabilities right out of the box from Axon, from EDC, from Informatica Data Quality, also Data Privacy Manager. We'll talk about others as well, but I'm just going to focus on these initial dashboards. We also support API access to the Axon repository, so we can also introspect into any kind of activity happening under the covers in Axon and build custom reports on that. So I'm going to just have a couple screenshots here and then we'll do a demo and then we're also going to get into a little more detail about the Axon API capabilities. This is a view within Axon of a, a dashboard. So what we have is a capability to build out um, interesting dashboards with, which are basically um, searches that you can build out and visualize in different ways to show um, how your governance program is doing. So here's an example just showing some, some counts and measures of different activities that you've got going on in, in this governance instance. So as you see here, we've got 1,000, um, 1,080 glossaries, um, some in most in an approved state, some in a draft state. We can see tasks and activities related to change requests and how overdue they might be, and also drill into things like data quality scores. So this comes right out of the box with Axon, and so some of the metrics I was showing above as far as pure system capabilities we can look at here. I'll also show a bit about the data quality, and this is the data quality view within Axon, being able to surface different measurements against um, data attributes and data sets that you're measuring. There's a very powerful tool set in EDC called the Analytics, Enterprise Analytics, and what we're able to do there is also track information about activity in EDC, such as logins, uh, the growth of the model, um, how many different things have been scanned, who's viewing what, and so on. So this is very useful to, to look at as well. So I'll do a bit of detail on that. And then from a data privacy perspective, we have dashboards we can view in these tools as well to look at cost of you know, potential risk of data. Um, if there's a breach, maybe look at sensitive data areas across different topics and so on. And so we have a lot of capabilities in Data Privacy Manager as well that provide just an instant snapshot of capabilities that you can support. And so all of these are like really useful out of the box information. So I'm just gonna walk through a couple of them in a demo coming up here. Okay, so now that we've introduced the concepts, I want to show you some examples using Axon, EDC, and a little bit of DQ. So starting here, I've got the home screen of Axon, and I'm going to log in as Rebecca Drake, who is a data steward in the retail area. And so <clears throat> when she logs in, what you'll see is she's got a set of dashboards here that we can use to start to measure some of our overall metrics. And so <clears throat> some of the things that I pointed out earlier in the strategy was you might not look at things like um, counts of information. So this is the adoption participation. How much information is in the glossary? We've got 50 items here, <clears throat> 25 are approved, 15 in draft state, et cetera. So we're able to get just an initial view of sort of current state. We can see we've got seven systems down here that are used for retail data. So that's pretty useful too. We can see peaks into retail um, customer data quality. So we can see that all of the rules that we've got, 211 data quality rules, we can see which ones are firing correctly, uh, which ones are at risk, and which ones are not meeting the standard. All of these are clickable as well. So when you're on this dashboard, really what you want to understand is day in the life, you know, how are my, my KPIs being managed um, specifically within the, the retail services area? I want to understand, you know, glossary items, other things that are related to this. I've got some interesting saved searches here, like, you know, zero out of my thousand data attributes don't have glossary terms. So that's great. That means I've got good coverage and alignment with the technical views. You can have multiple dashboards too. So <clears throat> looking at the central data governance dashboard, we've got a little bit different spin on it in that we're looking at the overall um, numbers for the this instance. So we've got a thousand glossary, thousand and eighty glossary elements, um, eight hundred and twenty-four approved. But we've also got some risk areas. So we can see down here, 
we've got <clears throat> glossary terms without stakeholders. So this may be a challenge. This may be a metric we monitor that we want to make sure that any relevant gloss glossary term has a stakeholder assigned. So I can see here that we've got 130 approved glossaries that don't have stakeholders. So the way something like this could come about is somebody leaves the company or changes roles and are unhooked from their responsibility in Axon, you might end up with strays like this. We can also see looking at one of our control and quality measures is that we're not doing a great job here in managing our change requests. So we've got stuff that's 385 days old. Um, this one's a couple of years old. So again, these could come about because maybe this individual no longer is with, with the company and we've abandoned their, their, um, their change request. And so you can go into this change request and reassign it to someone else. So really from a feedback loop perspective, these are useful numbers to track, but where it really gets useful, and we'll talk about this at the very end, is how can I take action on these? So <clears throat> just as one example, if we look at glossaries without stakeholders, I can click into this and see those 130 elements um, in the search, we can see these are all approved, but um, I might want to look and see if I can reassign a stakeholder here. So if I look at my insurance data recipient, this is a glossary item, and look at my stakeholders, as shown, there's no direct stakeholder. However, we've got Connie Smith here, who is a policy owner and steward for this personal data policy uh, policy. So she might be a good candidate, or maybe somebody in this community would be a good candidate to reassign as a stakeholder. So I think these are all useful concepts for sure. I want to show just very quickly how we go about building something like this, because it's it's quite easy to do. And you know, in Axon, what we're really looking at, we talk about the um, KPI type things, risk and regulatory insight. These are all useful concepts to manage. So what I've done just to pre-bake the cake a little bit, was I created a search that I called Retail PII. And so I'll show you what it looks like. Basically, if I click on the, the search here, I can see it's everything in the business area retail that is also part of the privacy of personal data as a search. So you can do multiple layers of this to really drill down into the repository. So how this is useful, is just running that search in, in Axon itself, I can restrict myself to these 17 glossary items. What would be very handy is if on the dashboard itself, I might wanna visualize this and share it with other people. So I have these two dashboards, I have the retail overview, I have the central data governance dashboard, I have one of my own too. So <clears throat> what I can do is edit this one and add a new widget, we call them widgets, and grab that saved search for the, the retail PII. Here it is. So in retail PII, what you do is you select, we already have that saved search. I can look at many different facets here to focus on. So it is a glossary based search. I'm gonna pick that one for now, but you can, you can juggle around with others. And then I can choose my visualization once I pick a column. So let's look at something like a security classification, maybe get a view of what that looks like. So in this case, this might be a handy search to save. So I've got a um, security classification uh, for specifically PII, and I can see 11 of them are restricted, three res uh, or 11 internal, three restricted, three public. So if I save this, now I've got that widget on my dashboard. And again, it's clickable. So I can jump into the subset of the 17 glossaries that fit this. Um, I can also share this with others as well. So if I, you know, if a lot of people find this interesting, I can share it with other people and then maybe eventually get it promoted onto the retail dashboard or the central DG dashboard. So just a good example of this. Some of this other view here on my personal dashboard is um, activity I've got personally to do. So um, of my roles, there are seven roles that aren't accepted yet. So I know I've got four glossaries I should probably take care of, one system to manage, one business area to, to manage, and so on. So I think these are pretty interesting and these all fit into our you know, measurability, KPI, risk and regulatory insight, as well as some of the control and quality. 
<clears throat> and so to focus a little bit on control and quality for a minute, I'm going to go into the data quality view. So we're still on my same search here. I can look at all the data quality rules that are firing related to these uh, privacy, data privacy. So this gives a really good insight into an overview of these 145 rules here, um, how they're firing and how well they're doing. So I can see that I've got really good validity, accuracy, completeness, consistency across these elements. Timeliness is a little short, but you know, that may not be a huge challenge just depending um, on your, your range. I can see how they're firing against target again, different views and so on. So this is actually, you know, we're still within Axon here, um, but what we're looking at is a, an insight into um, data quality. So again, I can, if I want to drill down into individual rules, this may be a methodology we use to, you know, click into this transaction ID, see de details behind it, and then track down the steward. So <clears throat> this is just some, you know, more interesting things we can look at as far as really generating those reports, drilling into data quality and seeing that something bad happened here in, in January of 19 that dropped my quality to an unacceptable level. So again, a drill down into a dashboard that's useful from a quality perspective. So I know that was a quick tour, but just wanted to do, show some of the capabilities in, in Axon and data quality, just to give you a sense of the, the left half of my, my diagram that I was showing before around adoption, coverage, quality, that minimum standards discussion. So if we jump over to Enterprise Data Catalog, here's where we've got another level of, of interesting information in our analytics platform. So as you see, this is the basic login for EDC. We just know we've got 150,000 assets from 30 re 36 resources. What's really interesting here, and this would be, again, our left side of our diagram, really looking at counts of information in the repository in EDC now. So EDC is more of the you know, pure data catalog, searching metadata collection. So there's a lot more data in EDC than in Axon. But what I can see is I've got dashboards all across the top here for really interesting information that we can manage. So user adoption, you know, we talked about that as the adoption participation flow. So I can see that users logging in looks pretty good. You know, we're trailing off a little bit here in May. So maybe there's an issue with, you know, people not having access or rolling off projects. We can see, you know, kind of a similar graph here for searches that people are doing we can drill down into different types. So if we want to look at, you know, just people in financial services or just people in retail administrator groups, we can drill into these to get more, more fine-tuned measurements. We can also see, you know, interesting things here about like top assets viewed. So we're getting a lot of queries against the customer um, table within, within here. We're looking at, we see a lot of information uh, people are trying to collect out of these workbooks. So we've got a customer order <clears throat> BI report that people want to look at. So this is useful too, because it gives us some insight into what the most important useful data is. If we keep going on here, you can see there's <clears throat> additional components. So this was that user-centric view that I showed in the minimum standards. Now we can look at our data asset inventory. And so you can see I've got 15 resource types. I've got an overall growth level here of, um, you know, starting with 280 resources, I've made my way up now to 538. So trend lines are very interesting here. Um, as Donovan showed in the in the demo for Axon, or will show in the demo for Axon, some of this stuff, the trending and targets, um, are a little bit in Axon, you do a little, some more custom queries to get them out. We've got them pre-baked into the, the EDC strategy here, the the data analytics, which is which is awesome. So that's my data asset inventory view. I can see you know changes where things have been added and removed and so on. So we've got you know, a lot of activity. Maybe in August and September is when we rolled out the, the the pilot in the first place. And here now we're in maintenance mode, so there's less stuff being changed as we go along. So activity. So we we're talking about participation. So here we've got another view of those. So assets with enrichment, um, business terms associated. So when we talk about uh, this metric, it's really taking that um, technical data that's defined in EDC and linking it to Axon 
information. So we're tying it to a core business glossary as an example. So <clears throat> as you see, there was a lot of enrichment happening in July, that roll on period. But then down here, I can see I'm starting to add more related business terms. And I've got a, a lot of, you know, is it 100,000 assets in or 100,000 terms in here? So I've only got 0.57% of them in here, but that's not necessarily um, an issue. You would probably would want to set a target for that, but typically you don't bring everything from EDC into Axon. So having a low percentage is, is not necessarily a, um, an issue, but this may be something we track against is the number of unique data domains that we support and capture on EDC. <clears throat> and additionally, talking about, you know, collaborators. So we've got um, you know, you can post questions, you can have ratings and so on that, that get mapped against um, particular elements in EDC. I'm not going to go into that stuff today, but just more the, the reports on it. We can see who the most active users are, um, and we can see, you know, levels of collaboration activity. And again, spiking early and then sort of drifting down a little bit um, as we get into May here. So, um, you know, interesting information. I think, you know, these are things that you put these on your, your minimum standards and say, we want to watch collaboration, we want to watch enrichment, and we want to track overall user adoption so that we can have a good sense of how, how much uh, progress we're making with our governance program. We have another concept, finally, and I'm going quickly here, but in the um, value of enrichment. And so we've put equations behind this to look at value of individual data. And that's certainly another topic all on its own. But in this case, we can see that, you know, our, our overall value of our data, uh, five and a half million pounds or euros, sorry, where we've got, um, you know, measuring research, research value, enrichment value, we can put numbers behind all of these so that we can start to track the overall value of data. So this may be something we have a little you know, ROI discussion early on in the project to start to figure these out. So quick demo, but I just want to give a sense of what we've got in Axon and EDC. I think there's extremely useful stuff and all, much of this is out of the box already. So it makes it very easy to start monitoring the program and uh, bring that value, start to monitor the value. So with that, we're going to just kind of close out and go to a discussion on feedback. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. My name is Donovan, and I'm an associate consultant here at Informatica. I'll be talking a little bit more about the API capabilities of Axon and how they can factor into your data governance initiatives. So the dashboards and analytics that come out of the box with Axon, while detailed and useful in their own ways, may not have all of the information you want or need for reporting. And that is where APIs come in. So with the APIs, you have access to additional metadata and information that you can then use to power your custom reporting and dashboards. So I've laid out a couple of example charts that I've created using data pulled from the API. So we can see trends, of creation and modification over time or by user. And, and these are just a few examples to give you an idea of what additional information the API provides and how you can use it. So to more explicitly lay out the process here, the first step is to extract your data from Axon by sending a query to the API. You then load this data through your preferred process, whether that be into an Excel sheet, a cloud database, or whatever other database, data storage type your business intelligence platform uses. And finally, with that data loaded, you can then begin to build out your reports. So now I'm gonna walk through a demo of this process using Power Query. All right, so I have my Excel workbook pulled up here, which is what I'm going to be using to build out my queries to send my queries to pull in the information and then to start building out some of my, my custom charts. So I don't wanna to get too into the weeds on the technical details of the queries and what goes on, but at a high level, just to kind of show you what is going on in Power Query, what you'll do is you'll set up this query that is connecting you to your Axon instance you're entering your credentials to get uh, an access token and then with using that 
uh, then querying to get whatever information about whichever facet or facets that you're interested in. So in this example, uh, we are specifically querying the glossary facet and pulling all of the, the relevant information that we, that we want to see about that facet. So if I were to go over into a different sheet here, so this is a sheet where we have actually created the query, we've run the query, and this is the data that we see. So using Power Query, we can put what we saw just a second ago on that instructions page into the query, again, with our credentials, with all of our other information, and then with the specific query about whatever facet or facets that we're interested in. So once we have all of that and we run that, this is the information that gets pulled in and this is what we see. And then using this, we can then use the other capabilities of Excel to create whatever charts that we might wanna see. So for example, if I wanted to do a custom chart about the created date of glossaries, I can just highlight information and Excel pops up with some suggestions about different charts uh, or pivot tables that I might be able to create. And so this is just how you would go through using Power Query as a tool uh, to, to leverage these APIs and the information that they provide. Thanks, Donovan. So we've covered a lot of ground today. We wanted to do this kind of wrap it up and talk about the feedback loop that's required for managing metrics. So we certainly know that these are a great way to manage the performance of the program. We also want to make sure that we have a feedback loop established so that we understand corrective action we need to take against particular metrics, against particular behaviors, so that we can improve the program going forward. So as we talked about, there's some initial definition we have to do. So defining the critical metrics, looking at the business side of things as far as which KPIs are managing, looking at the governance side as far as um, how many sources we're capturing, um, if we're getting stewards on board in the appropriate manner. We initially want to establish what those metrics look like, and that's really done with a slide deck like this and going through an overall checklist to see what those critical metrics are. Once we've got that, we can look at the raw data that feeds them. So as we talked about governance-focused metrics, looking at pure counts of stewards, kind of activities people are doing, if we are building out the model in a quality way from overall, not just data quality rules, but also lineage and quality definitions that everybody agrees upon. Also understanding from a KPI perspective that we're linking to the right elements, that we've got policy defined against particular, let's say, private data as well as business um, KPIs. The execution process then is running your day in the life activities. So a process might be onboarding a new system. And so making sure that we've got, you know, the right kind of information that gets captured out of a new system. It might be looking at something like just a definition review. Maybe monthly we go through and look at glossary entries and make sure they're still current, make sure that we don't have a new regulation that may have impacted something and that we're missing connections. We may also look at validating the strategy behind this. So if we're missing a particular data element as we're trying to capture the metrics, this can be an important thing that we wanna feedback as well. A good example of this from a monitor perspective is looking at if you've got people that may have rolled off a project or left the company, we wanna make sure we're also reassigning their activities and their ownership so that we continue to have quality data and we don't have orphaned elements. From a results perspective, we can look at that minimum standards report maybe early on for the pilot so that we're looking at how we capture information, how we've got the right level of counts, so we were monitoring quality or monitoring processes. And then we can start to use that to build, you know, as a foothold to start building out more metrics going forward. We'll have key holders, key stakeholders we're working with that we can identify if we're monitoring these things in the right way, if there's additional stuff that they wanna capture and then start to develop that remediation plan. So what if we have those orphan data elements that I showed in the, in the demo? What if we've got um, individuals that don't have anything assigned to them so we know that maybe they've been brought on board but there's no adoption strategy yet? So we wanna understand what the remediation plan is so we can feed that back. 
And then we'll want to update the guidance and instructions. So a lot of governance PAT programs are really about change management, about understanding how people work on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we might have instruction manuals, job aids, and things like that, that we may need to update if we find our metrics aren't uh, working in the right way. We'll also identify new metrics based on gaps. So maybe we do want some metrics around policy monitoring, things like that, that we'll want to feed back into this so that we can continue to build a program. We're also going to change and have probably new governance types, maybe new stewards come on board and we might have a different type of metric that we look at for a new, a new steward, such as a data quality SME, a process or policy SME, and that sort of thing. So again, it's an ever-evolving thing, and so we want to make sure we have the loop going back so that we're capturing this information, monitoring it in a good way. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to questions now. We have our panel ready to answer questions, and so thanks very much for your attention. Hello, okay, everyone. so we've got... if you have any questions in the Q&A box, uh, we'll try and answer them. <clears throat> so yeah, we've got a lot of activity on the Q&A, which is great. And so I did want to answer an initial one uh, that came in. Um, one of the questions was um, when to establish the metrics. And I think that that's a, a key one to understand. And I think, you know, our response is as early as possible, um, typically, when you're embarking on the governance journey and looking to, you know, start to show success right away, you know, just looking at that minimum standards report we talked about, being able to look at adoption by stewards, adoption of data sources, and so on, as early as you can, even if it's just five or six metrics early on, I think is important just so you can start to show progress right away. So, so that was a great question. We wanted to hit that one, uh, that one early. So we had some questions about uh, DPM because we did talk a little bit about that um, on one of the dashboards, our data privacy product. And so I did want to, um, if Lisa Morris is on the line, just have, have you talk a bit about DPM and um, how that relates, you know, from a metrics and sort of data risk and, and those sorts of that kind of perspective. Lisa. Oh, oh, right. Sorry, right. I was on mute. Um, yeah, so as, as David David uh, indicated in the presentation, um, there's a lot of risk um, analytics that are available or risk metrics uh, that are available in DPM. Um, so as you're doing your DPM scan, you can set up uh, policies uh, to look for certain things like, you know, is the data encrypted? Is the data masked? Uh, that type of thing, and uh, those that would all be reflected back in that DPM report, and then that DPM dashboard can then be integrated into Axon along with your data quality scorecards um, that David showed, and then that way you can look at all of the uh, metrics uh, in the Axon tool as opposed to jumping from one tool to the other. David, I see two questions. A question came up twice about um, <clears throat> identification of critical data elements or key data elements. Um, so I wanted to um, let you know that we covered that topic, um, identification and onboarding of critical data elements in a webinar last year. So if you can reach out to us to your CSM, we can provide the link to those details because covered in pretty good detail out there. But the short version is that the identification of critical data elements is not a tool activity. This is a SME activity. However, the process can be facilitated using Axon EDC. Uh, so that is what we have covered in, in, in greater detail in, in, a, in a separate document in the webinar. So it would be good for you to go through that. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, we had a question about um, developing a the remediation plan, and I think this is important. You know, we obviously went through that a little bit quickly at the end with the kind of the feedback flow that we want to implement. But from the remediation perspective, 
you know, a lot of what our customers do is we kind of build process flows that encompass not just the Informatica product stack, but also reaching out to the the data sources that that we're monitoring. And so, if we're looking at, you know, noticing a you know a, a particular metric, a KPI has low data quality. The solution behind that is, you know, certainly using the the Informatica stack to uncover, you know, who the the appropriate um, technical SME is for that that data source, but also then implementing a, an overall process flow that feeds back to the system owner and activity they may need to take from a technical perspective. So it may end up being, you know, a coding change, a stored procedure change, or something like that that actually impacts the data quality. But we would start that investigation, um, you know, from data quality from the metrics view. <clears throat> so just looking at the new questions coming in. Um, One of the questions was related to Power Query, um, data extracted from Power Query brought into Axon. And so I know Donovan talked a little bit about that. Um, are you guys able to address that question? Yeah, this is Lisa Morris. Um, we, we can make the Power Query Excel spreadsheet available um, to you. Uh, if you contact your account, uh, Informatica account manager or if you have an IPS team member already working with you, you can just have them email Lisa Morris uh, at informatica.com and um, they should be able to get in touch with me and I can provide them with the example and then maybe we can set up a quick meeting to run through um, how to actually use it, um, how to modify the API calls and so on. Um, the API user guide is another excellent resource um, for figuring out that's that's what we used in order to figure out how to use the APIs in, in that Power Query um, for Power Query uh, Excel spreadsheet. And then the important thing to know about that um, Power Query spreadsheet, that's just a utility. That's just to help you to play around with the APIs, get the data that you want coming out of it. Um, because sometimes when you're doing it directly from your reporting tool, like a Tableau or a Power BI, it's a little bit hard to see what the actual query is and what the data is coming back. And so that's why we make this, um, that's why we developed this little utility so that you can play around with the, um, the API calls a little bit and see the results in something familiar like an Excel spreadsheet uh, and be able to manipulate the calls from them. So there. So you would never use the Power Query um, utility in production. But once you've got the query working in Power Query, you can then copy that code over to like a Power BI. And because Power BI is Microsoft, just like Power Query is, it's a direct copy. Uh, whereas if you copied that code over to Tableau, you may have to modify it just a little bit for the syntax that's required by Tableau to make an API call. Um, but that API code that's in Power Query, you can just copy and paste it into Power BI um, and then have Power BI make those calls pull back all the different informations and separate tables that you want um, in that Power BI, in that Excel worksheet, um, and then those are available to you in your Power, De um, Power BI designer to then pull over into your report and, you know, make the data look prettier rather than just an Excel spreadsheet. Thank you, Lisa. Um, there's a question about ad organizations' adoption to data governance, how you can show the change in the adoption rate, whether it's up. So this is, uh, so by the way, I mean, this is a loaded question, right? So there are a lot of things that indicate adoption, right? So there are certain things um, that are that you can measure from the content perspective, right? Whether the content is uh, continuously building, we have more content than before. Even from the perspective of, let's say, you start um, glossary terms in a certain draft status, but over time you see more of them approved, less of them draft. So those kind of indications also um, shows. Uh, currently, and I'm not so sure about the latest version, up until the previous version, we did not monitor the click level information, how many people came in and clicked, but that was something on the roadmap. So uh, eventually those kind of things can be measured. So adoption is not one thing. So short answer is yes, most of those things you can measure based on a report, but coming up with those factors and it would be a combination of multiple factors that would show an option. I'll answer that. Um, how to uh, 
for the policy adherence, uh, um, again, policy adherence is um, related to the metrics that or the rules that you use to measure those policies, right? So it's, policy is not by directly; it's just a it's just a factor, a document that you that you mentioned that I want to ca capture it. For example, if you have some sort of information security policy, right? And that may result into one of the factors that um, any data that is restricted or, or private should be mapped or obfuscated, right? Now you can come up with a rule related to that, and those rules can be measured from system to system and reflected in Axon, and they could be related to a policy and the related systems and data sets. So as I said, the policy adherence would be a combination of what happens in Axon and the measures or the rules related to that policy. So, and we did have a related question to that related to, um, you know, in the, the demo I was showing a retail focus um, and, you know, we had different business areas for the, the instance I was using. And so we had retail and we have banking. We have a number of different areas that we've broken down there. And similarly to the policy discussion is by using a business area or other organizational facet and axon, you can fine tune that view to just show a dashboard specific to maybe your line of business to be able to focus that in versus the entire enterprise, but both both are certainly possible. Okay. Um, there, there was one question about uh, Axon 7.2 materialized views. If anybody else on the panel know more about that, you can answer. But my, my answer on that will be that the, the core idea of reporting is there is out-of-the-box dashboard that David and other teams showed here, right? But at some point in time, you will reach a point where your, your reporting requires more information um, or information to be masked across the facets, et cetera, or you need trending and all that cannot be done to those dashboards. That's where the core concept is you can offload the information using APIs or in, when the views are available through views, whether that happens through APIs or views, the idea is get that information out of the axon so that you can use any BI tool to do the, the custom reporting that you need, right? So if if that information can be available through materialized views, then it, it really is okay. Anything that's supported by Informatica, whether through views or APIs, um, is okay. The idea is to offload that information so that you could do reporting, any custom reporting on that. And then we do plan to eventually get to some sort of usage statistics uh, in these tools. So when they are available, some of those you can should be able to capture from the tool itself. Again, I'm, at, at this point, I'm not sure um, what our roadmap for that is, but that's something that's seen. Right, and in addition to that, um, the materialized views allow you to do SQL queries um, into Axon. So instead of using API calls, you can do the SQL queries. But keep in mind that the materialized views that are provided are going to be for the most common queries. So they, they also may not meet your specific needs. They may not have all the data that you really want in that materialized view. So it's still a good idea to understand how to use the API calls to get the exact data uh, that you want out of, out of the um, Axon system. And then with two minutes to go, I wanted to say if any of your questions, we did get a lot of questions and we tried to go through all of them. If any of your questions were not answered, please do not hesitate to reach out to us through your CSM. We'll be happy to have an answer to them separately through email or just talk to you quickly. There was one particular question that we didn't talk about. There were questions about MDM operations, match merge, and then their relation with Axon EDC. I'll suggest for that individual to reach out to us through their CSM because MDM operations versus the governance of MDM process are two distinct things, right? So uh, we could we could talk more in detail. Right? When the one minute to go, I think we could we could call it a wrap. Sure. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, David. Thank you, Donovan. And thank you, Lisa, for this wonderful session. Uh, hope we have answered most of your questions, uh, everyone. Uh, if we have failed to answer any of your questions, as Jay mentioned, uh, please reach out to us, or we'll definitely get back to you after the session. 
also wanted to call out that uh, the, rec uh, the recording will be available for this webinar in the Informatica Success Portal and the YouTube channel. Uh, also, please uh, put in your feedbacks and suggestions in the upcoming survey. Uh, hope everyone is safe. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, see you uh, on our next Tech Tuesdays.